All right. So today, real quick, mainly came out to the shop to experiment around with some stuff. I'm uh, trying to cut valve release in these pistons to run the 16 valve head. A lot of people say they're not required, and that's that's probably true. I'm just going to give myself a little extra mar margin of uh, error. So what's with the sandpaper and the valve sitting here? Well, it's uh, not really any kind of a secret or anything like that. It's really probably an old hot rod trick for uh, running bigger cams and, and V8s and stuff. I read about it on uh, LS1 Tech, so I'm sure that it's got its roots somewhere there. But anyway, what you do is you stick uh, sandpaper to the face of the valve, and then you put the valve in the head and spin it with the drill, and it will uh, it will cut a relief in the piston right pretty much right where you want it. Um, and to run through the what I've so far figured out is the kind of the quick setup for this. There's nothing really quick about it. It's actually pretty labor intensive. Um, first off, I've got some uh, adhesive back sandpaper. You should be able to get this at any hardware store. Although the uh, the fine people at Home Depot tonight looked at me like I had creatures crawling out of my ears or something, um, which is different from most normal days when that's actually true. I was pretty clean today. Anyway, what I've done is I've I basically cut a strip out of it and sectioned it up in roughly valve-sized squares. And of course, the the square piece of sandpaper is not going to work very well, so I'm going to take just a it's just a razor blade utility knife. I'm going to trim it off here. But the valves, you might say, well, these are trash valves anyway. If you have spare valves, it's a great thing. If, uh, if you're using the valves you plan to run, uh, well, I just I don't know that I would recommend that. Um, I suppose it'd be all right if you then took it and got them faced, but you got grit and other things spinning around in there. I don't even know that I would use the head that I plan on running. Uh, to hold the valves. Alright. That it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but I do try to get it get it pretty well. Um, really the first spin around the uh, the old block there will pretty much knock all this whoop, knock all this other stuff off. And so this is what you you end up with. Now uh, I will say that my first foray into this I knew what I was looking for in terms of sandpaper, and I figured it would be with the regular sandpaper at Home Depot. I figured wrong. It was not. In fact, it was up front by the floor sanding machines. Uh, you can see some of the some of the stuff there that I did this evening. Uh, that was for the most part done with four pieces of sandpaper. I did have to come back and do a little bit of cleanup on one or two of the. Uh, one or two of the reliefs with a new piece. If you if you have a drill, well, this is a Milwaukee. Um, if you have a multi-speed drill, I would recommend you run it on the, the low speed setting. And I kind of ease into it. I, you know, you can run it wide open once it's kind of started. Uh, but that first little bit, you kind of want to go slow and feel it out. I don't really have a good time, you know, to tell you to sit there and drill on it. It's going to kind of be, you know, dealer's choice on that one the depth you know we're not I'm not really trying to do anything great with it I just want a little bit of extra clearance just in case I'm not planning on running any really huge cams with this setup but it doesn't hurt and this is just a spare bottom half 16 valve head that I had laying around I think somebody sent it to me years ago to cut up and I, I never got around to that it would be a little bit easier if I uh, sectioned off one cylinder but then it won't sit down on the dowel, on the dowels in the block, and I'd have to bolt it down every time. And I'm kind of lazy, and that's not too bad. I could, I could, I really suppose, dig around in my uh, stack of stuff in the corner and set up, you know, eight valves to do two cylinders at a time without having to take the thing off. I'm trying to get used to holding this uh, phone, um, but. This is kind of what it looks like after the fact. This is why you want to kind of be uh, focused, damn it. All right, yeah, I'm out here. All right, there we go. This is kind of one of why you want to go slow. I have another one over here somewhere, I think. No, I don't know. I, I got one floating around here somewhere. 
that I tried to run it real fast and it just clogged up and then got dull and wouldn't cut anymore. Uh, and anybody that's messed with sandpaper knows that. This is the stuff that I'm using. It's, uh, it's pretty harsh, but you know, I'm lazy. I like it to go quick. I figure uh, the old 60 grit uh, driveway rocks would probably work a little faster. Uh, they had they had a couple different ones. I got a sheet of 80 just in case. You can ignore that in the background. Um, I will say this in my experiments with this. I would not recommend you get the Gorilla Glue and attempt to glue regular sandpaper to one of the valve faces. It, it doesn't work. It, it, I don't know if it's just because two dissimilar metals or maybe I didn't hold my nose right. I'm not real sure, but ill super glue did not work it never really hardened and it didn't matter after some uh some of this g whiz 3m no slip durable backing for i guess sanding blocks or something like that that didn't it didn't work on that and then the regular traditional paper 3m right there uh, didn't work on that either and i'm not not really a big 3m fanboy it just kind of probably whatever home depot had at the time that i got for whatever it was i bought it for and if you're curious about how to get the stuff off, um, a stone takes it off pretty straightforward. Uh, I will probably try can, I'm done for the evening. I'm not going to do the, do the rear cylinder back there. I'll try and get it on video of going through the actual process, um, tomorrow or well, Wednesday, whenever I get back out here to work on it again, uh, I'm going to probably conservatively guess it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 minutes per hole once you kind of get everything set up um i haven't timed it but that's kind of my gut feeling i've been out here monkeying around with this for about an hour and i have not spent nearly that much time actually spinning stuff it's been more setting it up and playing with it and trying different speeds and things like that so there you go